This video is to show you how to take photographs of an object like this. Several photographs, I mean. Uh, and stick it into Meshroom and let Meshroom calculate a 3D model based on those photographs. So I would say that's pretty detailed uh, speed bump there. There is a couple discrepancies on it. There's a little error there and here. I'm not quite sure what happened, but we can work with that. So you rendered your object in blend, uh, in Meshroom. I went ahead and rendered this because it takes a while. This probably took about 10, 15 minutes to render. But what you do is you basically load Meshroom and these images here, you would go to your folder that you want to import in the object. Select them all, left click, drag and drop and put them in there. And then once you put them in there, you can go to feature extraction. Now what I do, I click on this tab and I, I click the advanced attributes. So each one of these things you pick here it's got its own little inspector window, basically. But the order that the things are processed goes from left to right, texturing being the very last thing. But you can go to feature extraction. If you turned on advanced attributes, you can uncheck force CPU extraction. Now for me, my GPU, or... Yeah, I guess you say the GPU has more performance than the CPU, so uh, it doesn't take nearly as long to process. You also in here have the option to see these things are basically analyzed and little point clouds are made. But the amount of these little dots that are perceived from the images and the quality of them are determined here. Normal normal is normal settings. Uh, normal and normal. That's that's what it, the default settings are. I increased the describer quality to ultra, so it wouldn't be too many dots, but they'd be high quality. Uh, the more higher quality, the slower it's going to be. Uh, let's see. The next thing, texturing. I always set my texture size to 16K, and I let it downscale to 2K. Now, if you really want to go all out ultra, ultra, you would go to feature extraction, set both of these to ultra, and then depth map, which is the 3D mesh, take the downscale here and just move it to one, which you see it just voided out all that because it's saying, okay, well, you want that, then you're going to have to process it. But as long as you switch back, you know, it remembers what you did. Save your file. Can't stress that enough. So you made this awesome render, and you're looking at it, and you're like, golly, that would be great if Unreal 5 had it. That's a lot of polygons. And not only are they not polygons, but the topography is terrible. That's terrible. Look at that. That's just terrible. But don't worry yourself too much with all that, because there is a simple solution. Now, I wouldn't even worry about any of this stuff. Just when this thing is finished, all of them will be green, and you can double-click on texturing, and what that'll do is when you double-click on it, it'll open up texturing here. It's already had it open. But you would hide structure from motion. If you want to hide the cameras, you can hide the cameras that were used. Uh, you can change the size of those little balls if you want to just look at them. It gets boring waiting on this thing. You'd be surprised what you'll do to just try to pass the time just to make things <laughs> a little more interesting. But anyhow, if you have a problem, you'll see red. You can go to the log for each of these items and you can read what it, the error was. But most of the time, you won't have many errors. Uh, if you do, then they're related to you, where you took a photograph and it's not enough photographs, too blurry, or maybe there was too much contrast. You had back, the sun was 
blowing out all your whites and you know the contrast all off so I tell everybody if you're gonna take pictures the best thing to do if you if you cannot take a picture in a cloudy day then at least get in the shade not too much shade but you know like this kind of shade there wasn't a lot of shade here I mean there was shade but it wasn't dark shade is what I'm saying um, but cloudy, middle of the day when it's cloudy, it's the best lighting you can get. That's the most neutral color you're going to get, you know. Um, let's see what else. You need, for an object like this, I took twice as many pictures as I really needed. You could probably get by with about 15 pictures, maybe less. But I didn't want to drive back over here and take more pictures, so I went ahead and took a few extra and I just let this process them all. See, it's 35 images. 35 images. Um, it really only needs three images to pinpoint a pixel. Triangulate a pixel basically the way it figures the things. Uh, so if you were just saying you were just taking a picture of this corner here, really all you need to do is take a picture like a picture here, a picture here, and maybe a picture here so that you know you can get like one two three maybe four that would even be better five but it gives you an idea you go down this whole thing you would just kind of look that way picture 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 and then scroll down some picture 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 scroll down some Picture, picture, picture. And that's basically what I did. You see the little cameras. So, let's put this in Blender. So we'll have to go to texturing. We'll go to log. I'm sorry, attributes, not log. Attributes. And you'll scroll to the bottom and you'll see this mesh. Material, textures, all that. Copy this to your clipboard. Not all of it, just... Just the location, not the texture mesh dot obj. Copy this to your clipboard because you're not going to remember where that is. Trust me, that's some some crazy letters there. Load Blender. Delete all the stuff on the from the get go. Talking about all this stuff, the light, the block, the camera. We don't need that. File, Import, Collider, I'm sorry, Object, Wavefront Object, OBJ, Paste, and there's your Textured Mesh Object. Now just import it, don't mess with any of that other stuff. And actually leave it exactly where it is, don't move it. Depending on how many polygons you got, this probably is, I mean, it's about, probably about 800,000 polys if I were to take a guess. takes a little while loader the more polygons the more but like I said don't move it you'll see that it's upside down crooked and everything else but don't move it just leave it where it's at um, let me check the polygon count I can just go into here and meshing log and read the log I was off I was off by quite a bit one million nine hundred and forty six thousand triangles anyway so now we need to make a low polygon version which is very easy to do very easy you can slide these things out of your way if you want more room to see this so I'll zoom this in with the mouse wheel now what you'll do is right around here actually around meshing mesh filtering up here right click Mesh post process, mesh decimate. All right, right click, mesh post process, mesh resampling. Now you're going to grab this little ball here and connect it to that ball there. So it's like that. Then you're going to output mesh to import mesh here. This one here, you can double click on these two if you want to see what these look like when they render. 
click on this one and in attributes here it's attributes let me make this a little larger here and in this settings attributes change this to point one mesh resampling change this to point one or if you got a specific number of vertices that you want it to be uh, max vertices or um, You know, you can add that, but I don't usually fool with it. I usually just do a point one in both of them and it'll probably make it around like 10,000 polys, something like that. So now you'll hit start again. Now, unlike the first time it went through, these will not go to texturing because they will not look right. You can't decimate it, resample the mesh and expect it to keep the UVs from the original OBJ. OBJ Kenobi. So, this is what Mesh Decimate did. You can see that it reduced the poly count considerably by 90% compared to uh, compared to that. Now, Mesh Resampling, you can double click on this to open this. You can see what the resampling did. Made that a pretty, pretty topography. Except for that damn hole there. And all the other stuff we're going to remove. Now, all we have to do now is we'll mesh that resampling. Go to uh, attributes and you'll see output mesh. That's all you're going to see because you didn't send it through texturing. You can try to send output mesh to, uh, to there so that it'll go into there but you won't like the results. So we'll copy this like we did the other to the clipboard. And then in here, we'll import OBJ. OBJ Kenobi. Mesh object import. Now that's going to load instantly because it's a low polygon. Now you see there's two different objects here, right? You see there's a difference between the reduced polygon and the high polygon model is like an offset. They're, it's not, you know, they're not exactly, I mean, you got to get rid of detail some way so some things become flatter. But if you get up close and you get your measuring tool and you measure like from the low poly to the top of the high poly, I mean the high, you know what I mean, the, uh, damn it, if you measure from the low poly to the top of the high poly, we're looking at like 0.38. Remember this number. We're going to round it up to 0.45. I mean, that's not really rounded, but we're going we're gonna to use 0.45. Just remember that. When I say 0.45, you'll remember we measured this, and you'll see where it goes. Back in the blender, this is a great time to save your file. Now, if you're making a mod like I'm going to make, I personally prefer to save my colliders and my uh, J-beams and my blender file all together so I don't have to go hunting for it later if I want to do more work. And also at this save, you're saving when you still have the high poly mesh. So with that said, this high poly mesh uh, is the textured mesh. You're going to just name it high. And name the mesh to low just to help you navigate this a little easier. Rename the texture from low to to low from whatever it was by default. And then the high, this texture atlas, this is complements of Blender. It's what it names everything. I'm sorry, uh, mesh room. What mesh room names everything. We'll call this high also. So there would be no confusing the high poly or its texture with the low poly or its texture. Now, I didn't save the file yet, so I was a little sidetracked there. So, let's open up the mod folder, because we're going to be making a mod. And we're going to just reuse the mod. Uh, I'll just reuse the treadmill, but I don't want to delete my treadmill, which actually I have it here. But I'm going to copy it to my desktop for just a second. 
All right, and we'll rename this. Rename this to speed. Speed. Speed breaker. How's that sound? Now we can move it back into here because it's not going to be overriding another file. And in the speed breaker file, the mod info, change, open this in Notepad. Let me close all this stuff real quick. All right. We're just focusing on the bare minimum, what we need to focus on. Change the name here to the name of the mod you're making. And I said Speed Breaker. Save it. You can close it. Go back a folder. Go to Vehicles. Rename that. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that. Rename that. Speed Breaker. And you see the J-Beam exported. That was from the other mod. In fact, all these images here, I can get rid of all this stuff. I can get rid of this, this, because this is related to the older, other mod. This, rename the J-Beam also to eliminate confusion to Speed Breaker. If I had some reverb, I'd throw it in there, but I don't. Don't worry about the Lou. We ain't gonna be using Lou anyway. So if you don't have that Lou folder, you won't need it. Don't worry about it. Default.jpg. You don't need this. Uh, I mean, you're gonna re, you're gonna make your own image instead of using whatever this default is. And this defaults that. So you're gonna be putting your own image in there. JBM exported. Let me close these. Delete these. So there's no confusion, and we'll see what our progress is going to do. But before we can do all that, we got to save that file. And that's what we aim to do now. File, save as, and in the mod folder. Make sure I'm in the right one. Now, oh, see, I almost overwrite another one. Gotta be careful. I got so mad yesterday. Oh man, I was so mad. I overwrote the damn wrong. D-A-E five times. <laughs> oh, man, it was, it was a hell of a day. Speed Breaker, Vehicles, Speed Breaker. And right here is where I'll save my file. You can just call it whatever you want. I just leave them all untitled. They're on their own folder, so they didn't like there going to be other untitles in there with it. Now, to bake. Oh, you may say, why won't you flip them around? Well, just in the rare chance that they're off just one little axis different they're not going to line up right so i do all my cooking like this and then i rotate around before we can bake though we got to go up to here change your render engine to cycles i change my device to gpu uh oh in preferences You'll see in system what the settings are for CUDA. Like, actually, my CUDA is not my i7, I mean, my i9. So, that's what that's using. OptiX, I'm not sure if that uses the combination or not. I just, you know, leave them here. This is only for AMD people uh, and or none. But we're going to be using uh, that. And also save preferences if you are going to or have auto save on if you don't, you know, have, if you don't have auto save on, then save it here so that it remembers. Let's close this. Let's go to the next thing. We're going to hide the high object hidden. So this is only the low poly model. Now we want to get that stuff smoothed out or it's going to make the textures look like that. So we'll go to Object Smooth. 
and we are in object mode. Now what we're going to do is a little cleanup. We're going to pick the high poly. In object mode, we're going to pick actually the high poly and the low poly at the same time so that we can edit them both at the same time in edit mode. Now this will cause some system delay, especially if there's a lot of polygons, like one of these is over a million, like a million nine hundred thousand or something. So I know I'm not using all the stuff, especially not all that down here. So I'll turn on X-ray mode so that it selects front and back. Select all this and delete vertices. I'll do the same thing with the top. Well, you also got the option. You can turn that off if you don't want to see any guides. You know, if that's taking, if it's making your computer like really slow, sometimes that can help. So this is what we end up with. Oh yeah, we got this too to fix. That damn hole right there. <laughs> so we're just getting rid of some little things here sticking out here and there so that when we unwrap our mesh we'll have more success um, now let's go back to object mode since I deleted all that stuff and we can turn off x-ray I know it's confusing looking at all this stuff but you do see the difference in the texture, right? You do see where the high poly model sticks out more than the low poly model does. And that's that difference that I said earlier. Remember I said 0.45 is what we're going to use based on that measurement. So, but you can kind of get a visualization how that looks. Select the low poly model. If you want to, you can hide your high poly. But what we're going to do now is take this into edit mode and we're going to attempt to unwrap it. Since this is not got a bottom to it, it should unwrap flat. Don't mean it will, but we can try. So we'll hit A. Oops, we got a little straggler over there. See him? Out there free balling. Out there without any node or vertice to connect to. Just out there all by himself. Must have got lost. Hit A to select all. UV, unwrap. Ah, you son of a bitch. So that ain't going to work. Not that way. Uh, one of these is causing a problem. I'm not going to try to figure out which one it is. Could be. It could be this. Let's try it again. Maybe we'll get lucky. Ah, that was it. Okay, cool. What was that little thing floating out there? So that's why we get rid of them floaters. We go to UV editing. You can see the unwrap, how it unwrapped that. So what it's going to do when you bake the texture, it's going to take the high poly image and recalculate it to fit this. That's what it'll do. But we have to go to shading to do that. And inside the shading, let me just show you here. You got your high poly, your low poly. I know it's a lot of shit. Don't get overwhelmed by it. It's not that bad. If you look at your attention to here, you see low, you see high. That's just whatever texture is open in this window. Right? So that's the texture from Meshroom. And you see how Meshroom did the... UVs and obviously why that would never work on that unwrap one. So this is how Meshroom did it. We can open that up some more. And high, this is the high poly models texture. You don't have to do anything to this. You can go to the low poly, change this to low. And you'll see the low poly actually does not have an image to go into the material yet. That's what we're baking. So we have to add a texture, image texture, new. Now I'm pretty confident this is going to be a pretty good scan. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and render 4096 by 4096. I don't need the alpha channel. I'm going to hit OK. The color space will be sRGB. Now make sure the little box is selected. Now this is the part that's tricky if you don't pay attention. Select the high poly model while holding shift then select no select the high poly model so you can select the low or the high by just clicking around in here select the high hold shift then left click to select the low that's going to say you bake from that to that but onto this image over here on this side go to this little render properties and in here you should see bake well, I don't see bake. Okay, make sure you are in the cycles render engine. Only when in cycles will you get the option to bake. Now, it doesn't matter what what you're looking at up here as far as texture, non-texture. None of that makes a difference right now. We're going to change the bake type to diffuse. We're not baking the indirect or direct lighting, uh, or as game developers call it baking in shadows we're not doing that or we're just getting the color data we'll let the game handle the shadows we're going to select this box that says selected active that means that you're baking from one object onto another object does that make sense i don't know if it makes sense or not but anyway open it up Extrusion, this is that 0.45 that I mentioned earlier. Max ray distance, I always leave that at 1. Now there is an option to bake with a cage, but I'm not getting into that. So I don't fully, I baked with a cage, but I don't fully understand its benefit to explain, you know, pros and cons and whatnot. Once all this is done, you got everything filled out. You can bake. And over here, what you'll see is what this is, whatever you're baking, it's going to come up in this window. Just remember, you got to save it to use it. Because this thing will just keep over, you know, image over image over image. And you're like, well, what other things can we bake? Well, you can bake combined, which bakes all the damn roughness. The damn glossiness, the environmental map, all that stuff gets baked in the combined. Um, which that would probably be closer to what a mesh room render would look like if you were to, like, when we when we make the mesh room speed up, that would be considered a combined because it's everything just all the time. Then you got ambient occlusion. You got shadow, which we're not using that. I believe shadow is like for games that used to have cars with a rendered shadow under it. That no matter what, that shadow was under that car in the same spot. I don't know what position is. Normals are your normals map. That's what gives it the 3D geometry. Roughness is uh, how rough the texture is. I don't know. Emission is the amount of light it puts out. Environment is the kind of like a how the reflective map. If it's reflecting the environment, it'll bake onto that reflect. Whatever's around it, it'll bake into that texture. Uh, diffuse, that's what we're baking now. You could also call that a color map. Glossy, and then transmission. Transmission is like, um, I believe that's that's like whether it's opaque or, or uh, translucent. I'm not 100% sure. I never use that. Over here, you can see our beautiful bake. When there's no problems. Well, how would you know if you have problems? Oh, you'll know. You'll know because you'll see a bunch of patches. Like everywhere, there'll be like patches of black. Where like there's holes all in it. And what them holes are is that extrusion ain't set correctly. Uh, now, sometimes you could maybe get away with one and one and say well that works fine one works fine all the time why don't i just leave it one and one I don't know. I, the most common one i use is 0 0.1 and one and if i see problems then i start adjusting but we measured this so it should have been perfect which it looks perfect 
Now we're going to go up to here, image, save as, and now this is kind of interesting because we're making a mod and we're making a DAE file. So I'm going to put all the textures in the mod folder for the speed breaker. I'm going to call this diffuse. It's going to save it as a PNG. Don't worry. You can still convert that to a DDS later. Just let it save it. Actually, I'm not going to get into converting this particular thing's textures until after. Because I don't want to make the video unnecessarily long. But if you want to know, then you can stay tuned. And then you'll see how you can take that additional step after the fact. Now we need to bake the normal. So we'll select normal. Now, unlike the first one, this one, non-color. Don't worry that that change, that's irrelevant. Just change this to non-color or at least linear. You don't have to name these. This is, this is just for Blender. Just hit bake, and after a little bit, you'll see the normals. Now, there is one thing I did not do. And I'm kicking myself in the ass right now because I forgot. But I always check the face orientation. Thankfully, our orientation is correct. Our normals are correct. Red is on the other side. Blue is on the side that's going to interact with the game. Like, what you hit and stuff. You don't ever want this to be red. Unless you're making something to simulate light of melt in the car and you want it to eat the car then you could make it red but yeah if it was blue I mean if it was red all you'd have to do is go to edit mode and in edit mode you would hit A to select all uh, depending on which object you may have one that's flipped and the other one isn't but in this case they're both selected you would just go to mesh normals flip and it flips them mesh normals flip so let's get back into our shader I'm put this back in object mode I always leave this in object mode when I'm in shading I forget exactly why there's something is like it won't let you do in edit mode I can't remember what it is exactly but I ain't gonna worry about it so this is our normals and yeah there are a couple issues here here and here uh, this is basically where the faces are or topography screwed up I'm not exactly sure how to fix that by editing the mesh yet that's topography that I'm not familiar with doing yet it's uh but this is where that hole was so you can see that it had issues anyway here but this overall is not that bad if it's ever yellow then that means your normals are flipped. If it if a normal map turns yellow when it's baked, your normals are flipped. Uh, here, save the image. We'll call this normals. Take off compression. Don't do six. Don't export sixteen bit. Uh, the game won't support it, and I don't believe it'll lock it up. Let's do 8-bit color. Uh, let's see. What's the other thing you would want to know? Roughness. Now, here's the thing about roughness. For roughness to work, let me turn that back off. For roughness to work, you have to go to the high poly model. You have to drag an additional line from color to roughness. Just like a soul. Now, be sure to get back into your low poly. And this is going to be the roughness. And it can also be non-color because it's going to be grayscale. I mean, it doesn't have to be converted to grayscale. I mean, if the colors are all gray, that still works. But if you convert it to grayscale, I believe it's going to give you a smaller file size. And when you're doing 4K images, you want every extra small bit that you can get. All right get rid of or rather so let's bake the roughness if you accidentally unclicked on these they have to be selected 
not just by selecting them both but like i said earlier like where you pick the high poly hold shift and pick the low poly but that is a beautiful normals map you see what this normals map is going to give the illusion that the poly model is still there by casting all, all these shadows and bumps and heels this is what it reacts to that makes things look like three dimension this is the high poly data but it's going to be wrapped on the low poly model but the low poly models will look almost as good as the high poly model There's our roughness map. Ain't she a beaut? Ain't she pretty? Save as. Actually, yeah. yeah. We'll just save as. We'll just call this rough. Roughness. That's what I meant. Color depth. Don't do 16. You don't need alpha channel either if you're doing this. I don't think there's anything you'd want to have. It. Alpha is an extra channel. You don't need it if you ain't using it. Don't use it because it makes the file bigger. Save image. How many more? Ah, uh, well, let me show you one more. Ambient occlusion. And all the others you can fiddle around with. And I would suggest you go on YouTube and search how to bake roughness, how to bake normals, how to bake specularity. Basically, you can search these and get more detailed. Uh, specifically targeting like particular bake types once you kind of kind of got a grasp on things and it's going to take you a while the first time you do this just give yourself don't, don't expect to do it in 10 minutes just give yourself like an hour not that it takes an hour I mean it's going to probably take me an hour to explain it all but uh, there we go. Look at that ambient occlusion map. That's if you want to use PBR 1.5, then you got a a, uh, a ambient occlusion map. Save as. And we'll just call this AO. For ambient occlusion. Um, that's all we'll do here. Let's do one final save of our Blender file before we delete old high here. Now we're done with him. We just got our low poly model. Now if you'd like to see how these textures look on here, I can show you real quick. I'll just load a couple of them. I'll do the diffuse map. And I'll connect color to base color. And let's turn this around so it's correct. Let's go to layout. I can see better in here. Rotate. Yeah, you really wouldn't understand until you tried to rotate both models that you would see, like, where one may be rotating at a slightly different axis than the other. And, yeah. That's why I just wait. I can't tell if that son of a gun is upside down or not. You set the origin to the uh, origin to geometry if you want to just rotate on the object's axis. But I typically try to set everything to the 3D cursor when I am exporting into the game, but not always. Depends on where I want the axis to rotate. And in this case, the 3D cursor would be perfect. Because it's at zero, zero, zero. If yours is not at zero, 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 you can check it by going to view your 3D cursor location. It's easy to remove. To accidentally move by holding shift and right clicking. That can move your 3D cursor. The reason why people would do that, if they're trying to rotate things, the object, the 3D cursor. Now when you rotate it, it's at that axis. That's typically why. So you can always go back, put zero, zero, zero. Is it a little crooked still? That's yeah, close enough, what you think? Now, it's not looking its best yet. 
Remember, we haven't. Now that didn't do good at all. No, that is something that got lost in translation. <laughs> when we decimated this damn thing and remashed it, that high poly uh, rods there got screwed up. But don't worry. Here you can see this weird shit. That's from the normals. I mean, that was what we saw when we baked the normals map. That I said, look at that. That's all screwed up, that little area. We can fix it. Let's do this. Go into here and do this thing. Turn off specularity. Turn up roughness. Now let me show you what the normals map does. We're going to add an, a vector normal map. We're going to put it down here. Now we're going to add a texture image texture. We'll put that there. We'll open our normals. We'll connect color to color. Normal to normal. We can actually add another, let's see, add texture, image texture. We'll open up the uh, roughness. Connect color to roughness. Now let us go into our view and let us examine. You probably can't really tell what the normals are doing unless you're looking at, if you have an HDR light on, for example, you can see how the normals are affected by the light. We'll load this HDR image so you can see this real quick. Because when I adjust the normals or the light, you'll be able to see how the normals affect the object. And it's the same way they affect them in the game, except the game is not ray trace lighting, unfortunately. Now, if I go to shading and I go down here, this normal map, one we made a couple minutes ago, and we uh, turn this thing around, we can increase the strength of normal maps. Just for pre this is just for preview purposes. You can see where that extra three-dimensional geometry starts to appear. You can see this even better when you don't have a color map attached up here. So as we adjust the normals, you can see how that low poly object looks like a high poly object now. And what I was saying about the light is that's even more evident when you are moving the light source around. Oops, that helps if you got the damn render engine set right. I had it in them. I didn't have it in rendered. I had it in uh, just textured view. I had to turn it on rendered. All right, so we'll move this light, and you'll see. Now, if it didn't have the normals map, how would it look like that with the normals? That's too much normals. One point oh is a default, but you can see how the light and it does the same thing in the game the normals that's how normals work. Now, you wouldn't put that much anyway. Now, this this shit here, uh, that's a result of Meshroom not having enough uh, pictures taken here. This lower poly, or it was a lower poly. I also forgot to shade smooth the high poly model. Always remember, always forget to do that one. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put this in the game. Let's just rename it now to Speed Breaker. Let's call the texture Speed. <laughs> I always use lowercase for my textures. That way I never have to question, did I damn spell that with a capital or not? Because that matters. 
Uh, let's see. Not to confuse you all. Let's just remove all this. We saved all our images, so we don't need them actually. We're just going to do it like this. So it's just going to be a white object in the game for now. Uh, and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's go back to layout. See, normally you'd go to here, image, and you could open up your image that you want to stick on there, which if we're going to convert these to DDS, I wouldn't do that now. And I'd just wait till you get them converted. So we'll just leave it like this for now. Uh, we got to check the scale. How big is that compared to a car in the game? Well, let's get a car in here and see. Import Collider. DAE. For scale. And there's our damn uh, hopper there. So that's a pretty damn big hunk of rock there. Let's scale it down to it's about that about well, maybe that's accurate. I think that'll be close. We're done with the car now. Let's line this thing up. Well, I mean by line up, I mean get it close to the ground. So it's kind of like that. Uh, let me center it better. That should be fine. It ain't got to be centered or nothing. It's just how, how you want it to rotate in the game and stuff. All right, just to be on the safe side, set origin 3D cursor, which it wasn't set, it was still set back there. Apply all transforms. Let's export this as a DAE. Now this is the old way of doing collision meshes too, by the way, where I don't add all that stuff in there. Base zero, zero, start zero. This is just using the this will just use the models for its collision. I wouldn't say do that. Uh, if you can make a lower poly model be the collision, that's better. But this ain't too high a poly. But if you ever have some terrible performance because you hit some thing you created, it's because it's probably too many damn polygons, hey, too many normals that the game's having to calculate for the tires, touching them and stuff and whatnot. So in here, the DAE, let me call it Speed Breaker. Leave all that stuff the same. Yeah, you. that doesn't matter. Since that's the only thing going, and it's the only thing in here, I don't have to say selection only. Uh, let's export it. Now, we need the material. So I take a material from the desktop. I always have one handy, just sitting there waiting for me. I will change the main dot materials from this to the other. Let me just delete this one completely to show you how easy it is to just copy this and put it in here. Open it up in Notepad++, and this is where you're going to put the name of your texture what texture was that? That is Speed Breaker. And this is where I see it is important. It's important that you don't use caps if you didn't use them. Also, copy and paste a lot. That way you don't misspell anything. Now, I can go ahead and just type in diffuse.png or I could let the game do it. Nah, I'll just type it in here. Ground type will not be ice. Uh, I'm just going to make it asphalt. Actually, if I just leave it blank, it will probably make it asphalt by default. Save. Now, this isn't in a folder for the game to load as a, just an object. 
So if you want to load that just as a DAE, you're like, look, I ain't interested in making a damn. I'm not even interested in making a uh, J beam for that. I just want a just a nice looking speed bump that I can run into. Okay, go to levels, whatever level you want it in. Say small grid. Go into like the art folder or make an art folder. I always put everything in the art folder in its own folder. So like I'll make a folder here, new folder. Speed breaker. In that folder, you're gonna need a DAE, you're gonna need the texture, and you're gonna need the uh, material dot JSON. So there's our diffuse, our material, and our DAE. If all three are together in a folder, then you don't have to tell it where the damn diffuse is. This is not the case with mods. I found that mods need that damn vehicle slash blah, 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 blah. Uh, this, you leave. In fact, they tell you at some point they're going to depreciate that if you're using dependencies. That's why material CSs are, a lot of them aren't working because, like, shit, it's, it's just bad. Just use this if you can. And there's no telling how long CSs will be supported. Maybe forever, maybe not. Who knows? But this is the new. Get with the new. Let's load the game and load that speed breaker. This is usually the time that if I got other things I'm going to render, I'll switch to mesh room. I'll let it start processing in the background. Just remember it takes CPU and GPU. Now, if you don't have the extra overhead, then I wouldn't try to run them both. I need more memory is what I need. I don't have enough memory. I only got 16 gigs of RAM. You know, once I spent $600 on is it 12 gigs of RAM. Yeah, 12 gigs of RAM, $600 one time. No, I'm not 12 gigs, I'm sorry. 12 megs of RAM. 12 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, whatever 486 had, that was like, yeah, 4,096 4, megs of RAM. Yeah, no, I had to put an extra 12 megs to bring it up to 16. Shit cost $600 back in the 90s. Quite expensive. All right, F11. Window Asset Browser. And look for your Speed Breaker. There it is. And voila. We got a Speed Breaker with a no material. This is how the game just messes with me. See, it knows I'm making a video, so it's doing this. Any other time, <laughs> it wouldn't do this. Uh, so I did something screwed up. Let's see what I did. You'll have this error, too. Believe me. Did I spell it right? Well, if you copied and pasted like you say you always do, yes, yeah, see, you dumbass. You put speak breaker. <laughs> Telling people to copy and paste, and you don't even damn do what you damn tell people you gonna what you do. <laughs> so that's why it did not load correctly. All right, so that's not gonna fix itself. Typically, you just gotta reload the level. Or you be looking at it red all day long. You be trying everything to get that son of a bitch the right texture, and it'll still be red till you reload that level. I made a video on that a while back. I said, "Do you have nightmares about red textures?" And it showed old Anakin having a nightmare from one of them Star Wars movies. Uh, asset browser. Oh, you, you see mucho problema. What's going on now? Now I'm getting irritated. Small grid arch people diffuse. Oh, why didn't this shit? Now when shit like this happens, 
sometimes what you got to do, this is another thing, you, you think you fixed it. So if you go into your temp folder, temp levels, small grid, art, it made an asset for speed breaker, a CDAE. And oftentimes this is the old one and not the new one. So what I do, I just delete the whole damn temp folder. If it was a mod, I'd go into the vehicles folder and delete the material out of here if I didn't need it. And then, in the, well, I deleted the temp folder. There's another folder. It's got the vehicles, the CDAE for the folders. I went into the wrong folder. That's not the right one. That's where the materials are. Anytime you save materials from the game, it's for a DAE, it's putting it, if it's a mod, it's putting it in the vehicles folder. Not where you would think it would be if you're like me and working in the unpack folder. You would think, well, if I save it in the game, it's going to save it here uh, to here, but no, it don't. It's kind of backwards the way it works. You got to manually move that shit over. So that also was deleted. Let's see. Did I spell this shit? Let me double check. Speed breaker. How the hell did that happen? Do y'all see what I see? Do you see what I see? Well, I wasn't thinking, folks, when I said about making this a mod. I didn't consider that the mod's using the same damn texture name. Now, let's do this. I see the issue now. Let's change Speed Breaker DAE. DAE. Speed Breaker DAE. So I know that's for the DAE. Blue underscore. That way, this won't conflict with the mod. But even though the mod ain't made yet, the materials still is made for it. Uh, so let's re-export this thing. All right, so this is the mod folder. We're going into the levels folder because this is just a track asset. That's the one we're going to overwrite there. Now, we should have no problema when we load the game. If we have an error, well, it wouldn't be uncommon. I spent half the day yesterday trying to fix some things I couldn't figure out. I think sometimes there's just errors, shit, just sometimes just don't work. Maybe you did everything right. Maybe it's the game that messed up. Oh, dumbass. I hit escape before the shit loaded. Now I gotta reload. Ah. Oh. Get impatient, man. Get in a hurry. Start clicking too fast on everything. All right. All right. All right. Asset browser. Speed mother. Yeah, I did change the damn name of the damn texture in Blender, but I didn't change it in here. See what I mean? I forgot. I bet about half of you have made this mistake and didn't realize you made it. And probably got mad and quit messing with damn textures because it's frustrating as hell. Now, there should be no reason 
I'll close all these just to make sure this is what is loading. Yeah, there should be no damn reason why this thing doesn't load this time. If it doesn't load this time, then I know we are living in a simulation and somebody's messing with me. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think. There should be no reason why it doesn't load. None whatsoever. Oh, here we go. Damn it. Oh, here we go. Speed breaker. <laughs> you thought it was going to be red, didn't you? Uh, I told you I figured it out. And I think it's good people see these mistakes because, man, they do happen. And you, it, I'm the kind of type of person, if I mess with something too long and I can't figure it out, I just say to hell with it. And I just put it on the shelf and maybe later when things make more sense, I'll come back to it. But hopefully some of y'all have had these issues and this can help you resolve your texture issues. All right, so here's the thing. Let's turn the volume down. This thing's texture here, which I filled this out. I didn't fill out the rest of the stuff. I also haven't converted these yet, but we can do that later. I wouldn't get in the habit of doing that, though. I'm only doing that for this video. Uh, you want to go ahead and do all your converting, especially if you're sharing maps. Because you don't want to share a bunch of large file PNGs if you could have saved space by converting them to DDSs. Now, don't ask me about the texture cooker. I don't use it. I've used it and I don't like it. It locks up my game when I use it. So I don't use it. That's where you name your PNGs like blah 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 dot color dot PNG or dot normal dot PNG. No, I don't use that. Yes. Now, we didn't put our color other textures in there, so let's go get them. Remember, I exported a few textures. Moz, unpack, speed breaker, vehicle speed breaker, and where are you at? Roughness, normals, diffuse is already in there, ambient occlusion's not. Copy. And... Small grid, art, speed breaker, paste. Back to the game. And we're almost done, by the way. I'll do a second part for making this into a mod if anybody wants to see it. Since we added stuff after the fact, sometimes you have to refresh, but in this case we didn't. Also, if you're in the asset browser, and not loading from here you can just go to window asset browser now this isn't for mods for for track assets this works or you can just drag like normals to normal uh, roughness or specular to specular it is in the shade let's get out behind the car let's just move it how do you say? Let's move it over here. That's the most realistic speed bump I've ever seen in BMG. Mm. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks even better when it breaks. When it breaks. Uh, the mod, I'll get rid of this crap down here. I don't want that in there. But you can cover that up. But it actually probably helped blend into the terrain a little. Let's go to advanced. Let's put it in. Uh, better yet, let's do this. Time of day. Time of day is going to change. Let's see, uh, one. All right, point eight five. There, you see that? Ain't that pretty? 
Ain't that the prettiest thing you ever seen? That's those normals there working. Uh -huh. Look pretty good, don't they? We can also add an additional normals to detail normal, but here you'll want to change the scale to one to one if you're using that method. And then here's the amount of normals. You can make it more or less. All right. Now, for those who are anxious to go, let me show you real quick how. Um, oh, turn on anastrophic filtering. And depending on how much roughness you want it to have, but we're going to leave it here for now. Let's save our material. And you say, what is that dirty material? And what's that? Well, that's the current material you're working on. But if you have dirty materials, that meant you were in here. Then you went to another material. Which, well, I can't damn change it now. You go to something else and you change that one. And then you change a few more and you don't hit save on none of them. What this will do when you save dirty, it'll save all the ones that you've done changes to but ain't yet saved yet. So save. Now, this thing here, we can close that. This thing here, we go to its inspector. We can change collision type to visible mesh final. Do not use visible mesh. If you do, you will be hindering your performance, as seen here. Performance mesh is using visible collision. If this was intentional, please switch the mesh to visible mesh final. Just telling you, performance morning change it to visible mesh final uh, decal don't matter more about that rebuild collision now let's drive into our newly made speed breaker test it out shall we you see it's a little crooked see when blender in blender I did not quite get it exactly right Dang, you hit that damn thing on a low rider, mm, you gonna mess up that oil pan. <laughs> or them spoilers or ground effects. Yep, 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 sorry. You gonna mess them up for sure. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Beautiful. It popped my tire just like I'd expect. All right, folks, this is it for this video. Unless you want to see how to further enhance the texture, convert them to DDSs. We have arrived at that time. Uh, we'll leave the collision type like it is. I won't go into detail about changing that to use Blender's collision mesh where you, uh, I just won't go into all that in this video. Let's. Alt-Tab back to here. Power of 2 is 2 times any of them. It's actually any of these times any of these. You could have 256 by 8192, 1024 by 1024, and so on and so on. Numbers that can be divided by 2. Uh, this is what DDS needs to run in BeamMG. DDS format has to be power of 2 for BeamMG. Maybe not for all their programs, but for Beam, they got to be power of 2. So now that you take a look at this here, I believe I've already saved that, but let me make sure. All right. Let's load our images, our PNGs. All them PNGs. Ah, it'd be, man, it'd be so great if Blender could save PNGs. I mean, save DDSs with the right formats and all that stuff. It'd be nice. All right, small grid, our speed breaker. So we got that one, that one, that one, and that one. Into, here you go. Photoshop, I don't know about DDSs. 
I couldn't tell you. So first thing we'll do, file, export as. Now if you bake these in Blender, they're going to be power of two because you would have typed in your resolution. Hopefully you picked something that was power of two though. I mean you could have picked something other than power of two, but you know, go to export as. And in here, uh, you can just call them the DDS, roughness DDS instead of PNG. Just type that in and export and it'll ask you the compression type. Now this is where you put BC1. Back up there, Sonny. You done got ahead of yourself. You can save more performance by converting this thing here into a grayscale or get more space free. Now let's do this again. Export as roughness.dds export compression type the only three two the only three the game uses is bc1 bc3 bc5 this will be bc1 why is oh and you will uh generate mip maps bc1 generate mip always generate your mip maps I find it look better when they're generated. You get less noise and less aliasing in your texture. All right, now I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to go to Colors, Invert, and I'm going to save this as a. Uh, I'm just going to put Roughness Two. Dot DDS. Now, we can close these here. We're done with those. This is our ambient occlusion. Export as AO.DDS. BC1. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't convert that there to a grayscale neater. All right, now, now what's hanged up? Something hung up. What is it? Oh, this damn shit. File. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, image mode grayscale. File export as. AO.DDS BC1 compression type generate mip maps on to the the diffuse I uh, hear I'm gonna just take this clone stamp I'm gonna just copy a little bit of this area here by holding alt down and telling that to paint that there to kind of fill that in this would this would be recall this would be dependent on your Photoshop skills to how well you can do this some people got it some people don't but don't feel bad if this is some uh, trouble area for you we all have trouble areas this just happens to be not too difficult for me. I used to do um, Photoshop pretty much all day for a photographer years ago. So what we go in here? Probably something dark. Uh, probably that. Maybe not that. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. That'll work. It's better than what was in there. Now, you don't have to do all this. I'm going to leave that because I'm not sure what that goes to. Probably that there. Uh, I can probably fix that too. I'll just uh, borrow. Yes, indecisive is my middle name.
Oh, come on, man. You know one's going to be looking at that. Nah, they probably won't. All right, export as diffuse.dds. BC1, generate bitmaps. Now, if you want to make your object have the ability to be also transparent, Sometimes you will do this if you're making decals where you want to be able to paint a different color under the decal and still see the decal but also see the extra color. You can save it as a BC3. If you know you're not going to use an alpha channel, then you can do BC1. All right, give me one moment. I'm going to export this as a DDS. And oh, I thought I did. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I guess I've already exported it. All right, one sec, one sec. Take a two-minute break. All right, all right. Now, here's one other thing you can do. You can make this a detail map in addition. I go into filters, generic, I'm sorry, filters, enhance, high pass. Do my filters. I always change the standard division to one. Thing, I'll tell you what. Mm -mm -mm. One contrast, 1.5, and that that from a lot of testing, this works best for me. Basically, this kind of makes it outline around the detail, like find edges. Basically, this will bring out more detail in your mesh. But if you have too much division, then you're basically just, you know, it's not going to look good. You may want to play with these numbers. Four is the default. One is what I use. Contrast at four, I believe, is the default. Uh, 1.5, 1.8, somewhere in that ballpark is what I usually pick. All right, and we're going to export this as, what is it going to be? What compression type? I'll just put detail here. Detail.dds. Well, it's not transparent. It's not a normals. It's got to be BC1. Generate mid maps, BC1. And lastly, we come to our normals map. All right, let's fix this discrepancy here. In the same way we fixed the other one. Now, I don't really care about the little discrepancies on, like, uh, you know, like the, uh, uh, the, specular or the detail map so much as I do these this is you'll see this as, uh, you you will this this will be evident so that's not perfectly matching the geometry that's there but it's better than what was there anyway I just use the clone tool which is this here Photoshop has that hold alt no, actually, I hold control to save that area and then paint where I want it to go. 
that's all screwed up looking too. Yeah, I could have done better taking better pictures, but I'm not going to really worry about much more. It's pretty. Oh, yeah, that. That's the hole, remember? <laughs> that's that hole. Oh, this is crap, by the way. Oh, that's crap, because you don't want to see them damn triangles. Let's just do this. Just like that. Yep, yeah, just like that. And I'll try to fix some of this. It's not, you don't have to. I just take the extra step. Make my mesh look just a little better where I can. Why? Well, that's damn horse turd right there. Uh, that's a cow patty. I worked at a photo lab. The lady, this little lady, she did this shit all day long, every day. I said, man, I bet I could do that. She had the sweet job. All she did was fix photos all day. I did that in a, in a previous job, but... No, at that particular photo lab, I was a color corrector. And I wasn't a good one either. Uh, I was too productive, no, I'm sorry, too artistic for a production position, a separation notice said. Basically, I was over-criticizing my own work, redoing things over and over and over. And what's that old saying about insanity? Yeah, I was about insane all the damn extra work I was putting into the stuff and getting basically the same result. They gave me my work back that I'd already done and I uh, didn't even realize it and I tried to do my own work again like it needed to be done. So that's when, that's, that's when they knew, nah, this guy, he got to go. Normals.dds. Now this is the one that's going to use BC5 compression type. Generate MIT maps and export. There is one more map we, we can make. Oh, I know, I know. You're tired of making damn maps. Believe me, I am too. How do you think I feel when I want to make a new track? And I got to make all the new... If I want to make all that new stuff, that's a lot of shit to make. It's a lot of... Lot, a lot. Now I know why game companies have like 300 people. If you ever import in a DDS, don't load MIT maps. I don't know about the second one. I just uncheck them both. But if you do, you're going to see the MIT maps, and you don't want that. This is what I call a poor man's normal map. You ask yourself, what's a poor man's normal map? Well, it's not a proper baked map like we did in Blender. This is a generic normal map. That I, It's just going to give it just a little bit of extra roughness. Which that actually really helps if you use this, believe it or not. And sometimes depending on the resolution you're rendered uh you can get higher quality normals but not as good a geometry 3d geometry you can improve this just a bit if you duplicate the level well first of all change the mode to overlay duplicate the level and duplicate the level now the top layer and you can see through all of them basically by doing the overlay. Shift S, change the resolution, increase it one pixel, scale. The bottom one, Shift S, change the resolution minus one picture, pick pixel, and scale. And that'll give you a slight offset of all three. Makes it just a little bit, a little more 3D looking. You can increase or decrease those numbers even more for more of a effect but I try to do too much 
uh, let's, let's see file export as and this will be normals two, and that's the last one by the way normals two dot dds now if you stuck around then you're in for a treat because we're about to go into dd uh dds listen to me we're about to go into pbr materials for this other video i mean this other section of this video hey, i haven't been talking too much man yeah. starting to get tongue-tied and twisted just the earth bound is fit I. all right pick the object material now this is where you're going to swap out all your pngs if you want to you don't have to i mean if you want to you can and like i said it's easier to just have the asset browser open when you do this so you see all these here um you can change this if you want to see you know what the textures look like now if you ever see one that's just a little bitty box or there ain't nothing there it's just a box that like a rectangle then you did not use power of two just so you know that could be an error i should probably make that on purpose just so you can see what a non-power of two mesh looks like when you get that mistake so we'll scale this to just 497 37 by 46 obviously that ain't power of two all right we'll export it and we'll call this normals three bc5 generate mid maps export so in here Well, I'll be damned. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how. Oh, I know how. Because I didn't flatten the image. Which meant. Shit. I got to back up. Damn, damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Hold on one minute. I forgot. Oh, I have to flatten all them damn layers together to export that as uh, the normal that we just did. Not the one with the wrong size, the ones just prior to that. All right, now let's change this to a different oddball size like that now let's export that and we just purposely sabotaging that texture all right see normals three do you see anything uh -uh. and if you were to try to grab it well, depending on how you got your, you know, you may see a little rec. See how that's a perfect box? You may see a rectangle box that's like really skinny and tall and skinny when you got the wrong DDS. And don't even attempt to put it in there. You're going to mess up the thing. Maybe lock up the game. Who knows? But it should tell you. I guess I'll do it. It should tell you. Blah, 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 basically it's saying this is not power of two what are you doing unable to load compressed texture with non power of two <laughs> if you have some real shitty performance then you got it in the endless loop of no power of two see we can exit now and that will come to an end down there yeah 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 you don't want to do that so let's do, like I said, switch to PBR 1.5. This is going to make it look lighter right from the get-go because PBR lighting works a little different. Base color detail. Well, that's detail. Metallic. Well, we got two roughnesses. We got one that's inverted. 
and one that is not. I made this image here, or text this here for you to see. Let me make this larger. Transparency equals black is transparent. Roughness equals white is concave, cracks, crevices. I'm not, I think it's opposite for specular, but I'm not 100% sure. Metallic, metalness, white is metallic. Emission, black is emission. Now, it don't have to be black or white. It's just whatever the closest that color is to white or black, that's how it'll behave. So with roughness, white being concave and cracks and crevices, uh, we can... Well, let's just go down the order, shall we? Metallic map. What did I say metallic was? White is metallic. So whatever area is white, you want to be metallic. Uh, there we go. Now y'all can see that good now. I should have deleted the PNGs while I was in there, but I didn't. So whatever's white will be metallic. So we have more white or less white, depending on which one you put in there. It don't matter what it's named. Don't even pay attention to that. I'll probably need some normals map to really get to see how this is working. So these are our baked normals from Blender, all right? And you're like, wow, man, that already looks a lot better. Yeah, no, I know. It's just a lot of work. So you can see what is metallic as I change this based on this. If I put the other one, the darker one, and change, you'll see what's changing to metallic. All right, normal detail, that would be well, we can use the poor man's normal map. Stick that on there. That's too much. We'll lower that to one. Now what you see there is a pretty good looking speed bump, except for the colors off. Let's increase the normal map strength and let's lower this one. Let's change this to 1.25 and this to 1. Let's see, 0.5. Let's see, 0.5. 0.5. 2. 1. Two, three, four. I don't know. Maybe that's good. All right. Roughness map. Now, if we adjust the roughness, you should be able to see it affecting the shininess a little bit. But this all works off all these maps. So, like having this one without the others, you're not going to see the effect. Um, let's put the other one in there, this one, the inverted. And let's see. So obviously the cracks and the crevices are what are affecting or looking rough rather than the other. Uh, hey, it's all beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Whatever looks right to you. Does it look right to you? Then leave it. Ambient occlusion. That'd be the AO. OAO. OAO. I'll, sometimes I'll use a darker map, like the roughness map for ambient occlusion, and yeah, give it a little, make it a little darker. Uh, but the color is still not right there. Sunny is still uh, off. It's pretty, but it's off a little. I think I'll use the other, other one in there, ambient occlusion one. Oh hell no, that ain't gonna work. Oh, that's why you stick the 
what you bake. You're going to get some weird things if you don't advance. Clear coat. Well, maybe the paint's shiny, maybe. You know. I don't ever. I haven't fooled with that one yet. Let's see. Reflection. Let's change this to level. Now, if we reduce the roughness, we should see some more kind of like. We should see how that metallic y look, how it does. Let's see. That's uh, very subtle. Let's switch the maps with the other one. Yeah, I think I liked it the other way. Now, I can't remember exactly like this one of these I forget which one one of these works in a way where if you're using like a um, I forgot how exactly it, it calculates it I always have to spend too long sitting here trying to figure it out but there's a way you can have the different layers I mean I don't have to do different layers but there's a way you can have like a normal map only being the normal map for like uh, only for like what like the specularity of the thing is instead of like the overall thing uh, I know that sounds confusing hell I'm confused I'm trying to think about how to explain it let's put the other a lighter one in there now we're talking hmm color is just off well, I get none of them yellows I'm not sure what that base color I haven't messed with that much either so a lot of what I do is a lot of swapping things around until I get the look that I'm looking for emissive Let's add a second layer. Add layer two. Now, layer two, you get to by scrolling down, opening layer two. The amount of blend between layer one and layer two is determined with the opacity under layer two, not layer one. Layer one's opacity slider is just if say your texture is going to have transparencies and you want it to be half transparent you know this is just the blend between the two but you can sp further specify what's going to blend by what is transparent you can look back here transparency black is transparent so the more black in there the more it'll be transparent so you can do some pretty cool effects having multiple multiple textures on different layers but just remember it started eating performance after a while so let's stick that in that so now when we slide this only parts transparent are the dark parts the white parts stay untouched relatively untouched it's not perfect white I mean if you wanted it to be like or let me show you you could do this Mm, let's see roughness where are you at open uh, let's say you went to colors layer uh, levels and you increase the contrast so that it's more obvious black and white you know it's very night and day you know and you can still do like a, a gauze and blur on it like blur gauze and kind of make it look a little better 
All right, and we'll export this as. Actually, half of this, let me do it like this. Half of it, let me do this. Half, I'm just going to paint the damn thing black. Solid black. And then the other half, I'll paint solid white. And then I'll leave that other down there the same so that uh, you can see how that does too. All right, so now let's export this. Let's call this Roughness 3. I'll write the other one. The one that uh, we made a few a little bit ago. The one that has a different resolution that it's supposed to have, not supposed to have. So, where are we at? Or maybe that was the normals I did that. Oh, well, no matter. All right, so here we got. You can clearly see where the black line was, where the white line was, and how the one that was just high contrast, how it's kind of shifting between the two. I personally think that looks pretty good, but we'll just stick with this and try the other one. All right. And put another ambient occlusion in there or not metallic map maybe and this is where it just gets like you just damn just keep messing with it till you spent too long on it honestly add a little color this is on the second layer normal you can't have two detailed normal maps but you can have a normal and a normal map on different layers but not a normal detail and normal detail on two different layers it'll lock up or I've seen anyway it locks up bam ain't that some pretty damn stuff right there goodness gracious I think we're done folks that's just so pretty I'm going to save this here. Like Bob Ross, sign my name. Until next time. Yeah, I like Bob Ross. He's that filler that painted had that afro haircut and, and he painted all them paintings. And Oh, Bob Ross. I, I do oil painting too, but not as good as Bob. Bob's pretty good. At least you like listening to him paint. He'd always be talking this subtle voice. Like sometimes when I'm painting these trees, I, I think of myself running naked through these fields. <laughs> he didn't say that. Uh, but uh, uh, it's funny listening to him. He'd say, "We don't have, we don't make, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents or some shit." Old paint will piss you off. That's for sure. Just to make me angry. Damn, that's just... It's just beautiful. It's, it's just beautiful. Except for that. But what do y'all think? You think it's a good speed bump? I think it looks pretty good. Maybe not the best one. Maybe not the worst one. Let's see it in action, and then that'll be the end of this video. If you want to see making this into a mod, then that'll be another video. You know what? Let's do this. We saved our texture. We saved everything. I forgot to tell you the most important thing. If you're going to be sharing assets from one level to the other level, and you did like I did, where I basically went in the small grid art, I made a folder called Speed Breaker, right? Since I did more work in the game's material editor, it made changes to this file. Well, what do you see that it changed? 
well, it added all this extra stuff that we don't need. So you got to remove this directory information if you would like to easily move your asset from level to level. And once again, this only works if the texture and the DAE and the main.materials.json are all in the same folder. Why you put them in the same folder? Well, because other folders have their own main.material.json's uh, and other directories. And Now, you can add this to the other main.materials, but that would be just for that level. Uh, I mean, you can do that if you want to, uh, but we're not doing that. We're going to move this thing here. We're going to copy it to our clipboard like this. We're going to go into Derby Art. And we'll paste it right there, just like that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to load Derby, and that thing will load right up, no problem. No problema. I reckon I could go over one more thing. No more I go over now, I won't have to go over later. I you're remembering everything I went over, putting in these notes will be the hard thing. Let's see, where are you at, Derby? Let's uh let's uh, we'll pick that right there. <sighs> Damn it. I think I ate a bug. I think that little bastard landed in my energy drink. Where the hell's all that? Yeah, yeah, I'm shit. <laughs> some other stuff I was working on a while back. All right, where's some asphalt? No one, no home. No home. Not today. No, no, no. Alright, art speed breaker. Where's our speed breaker? I look at that there. Damn thing. This looks so good. I think like destroyed stuff like this always looks good because it's like got so many discrepancies in it it looks more like the real world you know real things are not perfect you know what I mean I don't care if it is supposed to be perfect nothing is perfect collisions I guess I could go over the other kind of collisions then doing this method for those that are interested in doing the other method. Uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's get our vehicle and let's run into this thing. Now what's going to be cool is when the thing can break into pieces. That'll be later. Let's bring our vehicle. You know that would have bent that damn wheel in real life. I think what's more fun to do though is when you got several of them is posing a bigger hazard, you know. One here, maybe another one here. Hold shift and just clone things. 
I try not to ever like clone everything the exact same way. Like, which there's not really many options with this. So, I mean, I guess I could rotate it around. Turn one of them that way, and another one another way, and so on and so forth. Just remember, if you do this and you did not set your collision mesh over here, then you have to do it to all of these after the fact. So better do it on the first one. That way, when you clone it and stuff, you uh, don't have to set them for every single one of them. But I don't know what that fella was drinking when he made it, made that parking lot there. But them damn things are all over the place. So. I was drinking or something, I think. Some old speed bumps are all over the damn place, like I said, all different. Now, one advantage is, like, you can use invisible mesh final. You can scale the mesh, and it will recalculate the collisions. I have found this to be a problem if, um, say, you are uh, using the other method where you got base zero zero start zero one C O L M E S H dash one for collision mesh and so on and so forth. That that method I have found that sometimes for whatever reason I haven't figured it out if something I'm doing wrong or, uh, but sometimes sometimes it does not work correctly. One of these exceptionally larger than the others. Alright, I think we got us a fun time there. Coming. Rebuild collision. Go back to hop with her uh, game mode. Full speed. Man, it did surprisingly well. Maybe I should get a truck. I bet the damn sports car won't do that good, though. Oh, I already know that's going to be all messed up. Takes a while for that one to load there. People ask about performance all the time. Do y'all see like some frame stuttering and shit? You see I'm in like a window mode kind of window mode. If I hit alt enter, it'll clear that up. I'm mean, most of it up. Most of the time. Why exactly? I don't know. don't play the game very much. Maybe one percent time. I mean it's a great game. I just enjoy making things. I just I just enjoy making things. I don't know. I don't actually play the game much so I don't drive very good. I think I'll just, you know what? Oh, yeah, shit. I mentioned it. Let me just do it. All right, so to do it the other way, you basically need to add two empty plane axes. Add empty plane axes. Name one base zero, 00 and the other start zero, 01. Hold shift. Left click. 
and drag and drop put start in base just like that don't worry about opening these things up and stuff I mean they, they all can be closed it's fine basically what this is is like a folder hierarchy that's like a folder with a folder inside of it and inside that folder is that folder and inside that folder is that folder that's one way you can think of it but you'll hold shift lift click drag and drop put speed breaker right there and start if you're having performance issues and you say man i love your speed bumps but man my system is struggling with 500 of them on the map so you would rename this put an underscore put little a a little bitty a and put 500 for example that's how many pixels it'll be when it makes the transition but it actually won't transition to that until you have a second one so we'll duplicate it we'll hide the first one we'll rename the second one like a 100 this one we will turn this on this one we will add a modifier decimate there's also remesh nah I mean I should have the textures on here to really see what this is doing because it's not gonna give you a good idea looking at it like that Because you want to pay attention when you decimate, you want to pay attention to your textures. So we're at 9,000 polys. That's pretty damn close. I said around 9, 10,000, I think. That's my guess. They reduce this thing on down to, to a nub, basically. And that'd actually be what you'd want to use for your collision mesh, because that would be a lot more favorable on performance. We can do that, too, though. Let's actually bring it up a bit more. That's a significant improvement and it still looks okay. Apply it. That's so how you can see the low quality. At high quality, then the low quality, you can barely tell the difference. Duplicate this one. Low poly, duplicate it. And call this one C. O L M E S H dash one. That'll be your collision mesh. Now, if you want this thing to turn into a little billboard when it's really, really far away, uh, you can add another empty inside of base zero zero. Add empty plane axis, and this one is inside of base zero zero. This one will be called B B underscore auto bill board 25 and like I said that's inside of base zero zero since I added it um, while having base selected I believe that's why it stuck it in there but if you were to have made it and it's not in there for example it's like say here I'll move it out of there damn yeah, say so you did something screwed up like this, or you would just hold left, hold shift, left click, drag and drop, and put this into base. Which it didn't move it quite right. I don't know what I did wrong. There it goes. See, that's how you want it. Now this will have a level of detail swap. I'm going to get that texture out of there before I send it. I don't want to confuse anything because I used the other. Uh, uh, DDS instead. So let's export this as Collider. Let's go into that level. Derby Art Speed Breaker. We'll just call this uh, LOD Speed Breaker. You can call it Flaming Tomato. Don't matter. Call it whatever you want to call it. Let's load it up in the level. Go to our asset browser. It should be in here. If ever not, you can uh, like go up to like the art folder and just right click and say regenerate asset data, uh, refresh directory, refresh assets. I forget which one does it. One of them. 
and then, you know if you're not seeing your new mesh you just exported but we see ours here clearly now to test something's LOD what you do is you well I move it up in the sky it just makes it easier for me to contrast things so as I move it away I get closer to it it's easier to tell what's going on with it let me uh, change the, this thing here so as I get farther away it should drop in quality there you seen it right there right there and there so apparently at 100 pixels well let's go even farther out to where it's a billboard where it's 25 pixels <laughs> it's just a billboard actually I don't even see the damn billboard Oh, there, maybe there. Actually, it's supposed to switch to the first one from a billboard at 100 pixels. Switch. I forget shit. I can't remember. You can manually look at these by going into the object shape editor and force detail, and it'll show you the different LODs. It's like, it says, like, this is 9,000 polys. For the next step, it's 500 polys. And then the next step, which for some reason, my billboard ain't right. Man, I damn double shit, man. Damn it, I was hoping I was done. Something I screwed up. That's right. I think I done screwed up. Don't worry about that shit. I can't remember right now exactly what the hell the deal. Maybe I had to reload the level for that billboard to work. All right, maybe it generates some as the level loads. I mean, that's what, kind of what I'm thinking. I'll call this one Speed Breaker 2 since I moved that. I don't know it's a different one. Oh, wait a minute, you dumb bastard. That's the wrong folder. Say break three. L O D. Not sure. Oh well, yeah, my billboard ain't showing up. It's disappearing for some reason. Alright folks, I think that's it for this one.